फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी थँक बापसा जे एन यू इन्वायटिंग मी टू डिलिव्हर अ लेक्चर ऑनलाईन ऑन द अकेजन ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबासाहेब आंबेडकर्स बर्थ सेलिब्रेशन्स ऑन ए फोर्टीन्थ एप्रिल टू वेल अँड ऑल्सो ज्योतिबा फुलेस बर्थ सेलिब्रेशन्स आय मीन इट्स इट्स ए काइंड ऑफ एव्हरी ॲन्युअल इव्हेंट दॅट यू नो द बापसा कंडक्ट्स इन जे यू वेल लेट मी फर्स्ट टेल दॅट यू नो आय मीन हाऊ देर आर दर मेनी पीपल हू आर कोपिंग अप विथ दिस काइंड ऑफ यू नो ॲडमिस्ट अमिस्ट कोविड नाईन्टीन दॅट आय विश एव्हरीबडी विल हॅव अ सेफ स्टे इन द हाऊसेस अँड दो इट इज नॉट द privilege of every you know uh, body but uh, hope we will all resume our work uh, soon uh, i wish by saying this uh, by today's lecture which i would be uh, uh, delivering uh, it is being titled as uh, hands that serve and the indian elite why did i give this title uh, like you know this title itself says that first time in my life history in in my life that i have seen how the indian elite middle class or the privileged uh, classes of this society has disowned the classes who used to serve from morning to evening at every level that the comforts that has been extended that has been extended by serving to these people the laboring class is in deep crisis today and uh, my how ambedkar as a member labor member who advocated that you know i mean labor's welfare is very much necessary for the success of parliamentary democracy and if labor is not taken care in any society that there would be a kind of serious collapse and that's what we are going to witness in the future and by saying that amidst this covid 19 has laid back the deep fissures of indian society a disease which infected rich in poor alike has never been witnessed more than a century and as we know that you know i mean it is not that it is new that in indian society that you know deaths is not common there are many disease like cholera which used to happen now if you see that you know there was a health survey that in india per day there were 4000 people are dying for different diseases never public health emergency was felt by the politicians and the elites of the society in post independent india where health and education is such an important domains to be invested has been neglected by the dominant state how do we understand this how the disease first time has transmitted from rich to the poor and poor are the victims of this transmission with the policy of lockdown what is this lockdown before explaining that let me tell that there is no known cure no prescribed treatment apart from lacking oneself locking oneself away from your fellow citizens or your fellow creatures now indians are very you know familiar with uh, social distancing you know as it is part of their very lived reality we believe in separate utensils for a hired help 
some are to be clean toilets or in sort and i mean there are some who we have segregated work informal work in our house or outside based on the caste hierarchy and which is in other words in short spatial segregation which is also specifically rooted with culture and closely connected with ritual purity so indians are very familiar keeping themselves socially distant by saying this however in order to protect themselves the rich the elite the middle class the privileged class who has shelter who can work from house from their disease since anyone could be a carrier so then there is an assumption that you know i mean either poor can carry the this disease or rich can also carry the disease but the brahmanical authority to state the only option was locking everything down is the easiest solution but did this this state ever thought about the welfare of the people 80% of the informal partly formal workers who extended their services towards to these 20% privileged elites did they ever thought that you know i mean this lockdown follows and its effect on the marginal or the migrant you know uh, labor the people who have who who survive on every day Uh, earnings they never gave a thought as a palliative towards its upper middle class caste constituency the state commenced by imposing of course i mean the state has asked people to lock down itself and also it commence the retelecasting of rama and maha rama and mahabharata but what about the millions who don't have the leisure to enjoy these epics in the safety or comfort of their own homes the visuals of hundreds thousands of men women old aged children clutching the few positions desperately walking towards to their own villages to their own places native places how does one look at this journey is it a happy journey is it a pain? it it's obviously it it's a very painful journey this pain has never been understood by the policy makers or the political elite of this society is there any end in sight of this journey why is that such kind of situation did every ever for the past 70 years the parliamentary democracy and the rulers of this society and the elite class or the middle class did they ever felt that okay we also need to extend the welfare or helping hand towards to these you know working classes or the laboring classes who cleans your utensil their utensils who drives their cars who 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 wash their clothes who are the delivery boys you know cutting across all kinds of services which has been extended by the millions of the people and their services has been scuttled down by locking themselves into the house how do you understand this entire situation in a democratic state like india well did the policy makers as i said experts or even political class ever pause to think as to how these famished hordes survive the precarious journey on the one hand you have politicians appealing to the labor to to stay put and every resource will be made available to them 
every state government has announced that you know we will be extending all our services towards to the labor who are migrating but what have what is happening at the ground even after you know the couple of weeks that has been finished of the i mean the lockdown that the people are yet to receive their ration now how does one can understand this miserable situation of the migrant labor why is that they are ready to travel thousands of kilometers to their own destiny if one questions them the only answer comes out from them is that yes let me go back and die at our own places with our own people see the way how they have disowned and there is no any kind of they they haven't disowned it is that the middle class has disowned these service providers is there any guarantee that the landlord will not ask about rent is there a guarantee that you know i mean uh, 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 a brahmin baniya business communities will extend credit to these people to survive is there a guarantee that they will get a ration to survive themselves in the city spaces like mumbai delhi hyderabad or bangalore chennai so the question is whether they have appealed appealing for the sake of appealing is something different now on the other hand we have tantalizing videos of celebrities to see the, the from the day one that you know how celebrities are doing a domestic chores since suddenly our services providers have been forced to go back to their homes i'm using this homes within courts valorizing that some celebrity has done this and also a new acronomy is making the rounds like you know i mean bjp <coughs> this acronomy if you i mean if i uh, uh, explain the B, bjp which is this acronomy stands for you know i mean bartan jadu pocha away from uh, the glare of the social media a dystopian world is unraveling as i said people are forced to beg food some migrants are not even able to fetch some bottle of water water crisis summer is approaching water crisis government has never had any kind of you know a perfect plan for the, addressing this water crisis as usual in, in usual circumstances also there are many problems that you know i mean the migrant labor experience and in many cases where migrant labor were i was asking for their own wages they have been brutally beaten up by the police they have been forcibly locked down and they are demanding wages they are demanding food they are forced to walk long distances with this lockdown and when they reach to their home states there is a blockade complete blockage by <clears throat> the boundaries of the state which again further pushing them into all kinds of risk some people are dying with a lot of exhaustion yesterday a woman threw five women uh, sorry yesterday a woman threw five five of her children in ganges how do we understand this kind of you know distress there is a lack of transport and if suppose if you want to go approach a hospital a privileged middle class can apply for a pass they will get and they can go and get a treatment from the hospital but what about the poor what about the migrant uh, labor who doesn't have basic amenities are there being doctors has been are there at their own doorstep if not doorstep where you know the is accessible where the, the doctors are accessible when they are traveling towards to their own home, own home towns agriculture products are rotting in the fields 
agriculture labor is in deep crisis unemployment with this all kinds of you know i mean there is no work at all by providing 5 kilos of ration or 10 kilos of ration by providing 1000 rupees jandan yojana or 5000 rupees for farmers or whatever the government has extended it is very good but is it sufficient the question is that how do you get back them to their normal life words well two days or uh, sorry if not two days you know i mean couple of uh, a few days before we were told to light lamps to honor the people battling the who are battling the disease on the front lines by a honorable prime minister and he said that you know you should not come out you have you should draw a lakshman rekha so that we can defeat this virus what about people who are health workers of course the lightning lamp is for health workers or police but the same service that has been extended by the safai karmacharis is it also applicable to them by lamping lights being into the house is not going to serve or it's not going to help the migrant uh, labors hunger to address the question of migrant labors hunger and it is assumed that everyone has a terrace by asking you to light the lamp means in my assuming that everybody will have a terrace or a balcony to project their patriotism but how many people have this kind of you know luxury who are the workers who are leading the precarious existence interestingly if i can draw your attention like you know i mean how is that i mean it it, it is going to be a vulnerable state of situation you know a generation will be lost in terms of access to resources employment opportunity education the chadi ministry asked the you know teachers like us to start zoom or online classes but how many villages has network proper network or how many families has a good mobile phone or how many students has mobile phone connection or internet connection at their places where they are staying so that they can access we have a very poor infrastructure that will not address the needs of such kind of you know situation and a generation is going to suffer it has been already suffered it is going to suffer much more livelihoods are is under huge threat will, will can you can you can you generate can the state generate with all its economic crisis that has been pushed the state into a economic vulnerability with all demonetization and or even for that matter gst where before covid 19 the economic situation was more worst that which we have experienced and adding to that covid 19 lockdown of all kinds of industries you know i mean uh, uh, economic activity who is going to be vulnerable the more vulnerable would be the poor of this country workers labor of this country and as some of the economists were you know i mean are 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 hinting that our priorities must be focused on how to rebuild the economic system to deal with the poverty to deal with uh, vulnerability by drawing uh, as i already mentioned by drawing lakshman rekha one cannot address these problems it is very valorizing 
that you draw a line and you don't cross. But it is very tough for many communities, very many classes, especially working class, especially unorganized working class, labor. And my, what would be the future? I mean, in the sense, before mentioning what would be the future of this, you know, I mean, vulnerability, or what, a, what would be the future of India's democracy, let me tell that, you know, I mean, the state should focus much on rebuilding the economic activity, as promised by our Prime Minister, bring, bringing black the black money, and also seize all the temple money. Temple money must come under the state's control. After all, all this money is people's money. And there is a huge mega project of rebuilding the capital city or the rebuilding the, uh, uh, the uh, Lutean's Delhi with thousands of crores. I think a sensible, if it is a sensible government, it should, it should stop that project. And it should divert the entire money towards to extending the helping hand for the poor migrant labor. How do you build the trust that has been lost by in the process of this COVID-19 that the workers doesn't have trust now. They can't trust our urban middle class. I think you know state should also focus much on these issues. A socialist pattern of uh, development model need to be adopted. Keeping all the ideological, cultural, ideological baggages aside. As a democratic state, welfare of the lowest rung of the society is very important. And what would be, as a last part of my you know talk, what I'm planning to uh, conclude, how I'm planning to conclude is that, well, Suppose if lockdown is lifted tomorrow or maybe after a couple of weeks later or even after one month, that how is that normalcy can be restored? How is the trust can be built between people? How is that the entire lost relationships or lost uh, trust or lost communication between the people will be restored. And I, 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 I wish the future India will be more labor workers friendly and there will be an understanding by the urban middle class elites that the necessity of labor respecting this labor who extends their service towards to their happiness will be taken care. I hope there will be an attitudinal change among these elite classes, elite groups and the elite political parties. If not, as Ambedkar visualized or Ambedkar you know, put forward it very clearly that labor class must come together. They should have their own political party to govern themselves. Else, the same political parties who are clutching their communal casteist ideologies is not going to help the poor, help the marginalized groups or unorganized, you know, uh, informal labor. So friends, it is necessary for all of us 
to engage with the policy makers with the political elite or even for that matter the middle class upper middle class salaried classes also that how these essential services are necessary and respecting the labor which is necessary and how in the process the democratic relations can be established uh, i once again uh, thanks uh, bapsa and udsf uh, jnu uh, uh, asking me to uh, deliver an online lecture though i am not very familiar with such kind of lectures uh, but um, hopefully we'll come out from all these you know troubles and uh, let us extend our hands to the most deserved unorganized marginal migrant labor or lower caste maximum as we can thank you and jbeam